Bonjour, I'm Gonorrhea. Let's talk. Five reasons why plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are good, and why electric vehicle purists who hate them just don't get it. But first, I have a confession. I like electric vehicles. I've been following this industry for quite some time. And you know what? I really like Tesla. In fact, I've been consuming major Tesla news and I'm subscribed to both electric.co and insideev.com. Both great websites for news and analysis. And in the last few weeks, I came across an excellent op-ed from Inside EV called Perfect is often the enemy of good in the plug-in world. I've linked it below in the description of this video and I highly recommend you read it. But even if you didn't, that's okay. The summary of the article is plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are good for EVs, not bad, and it gives some really good reasons as to why. But I feel the article did not go far enough and here in this video, I will explain all the major reasons why these hybrids are not only good, but necessary. But first, a word on acronyms for those of you new. ICE, internal combustion engine, such as gas or diesel, among others. EV or BEV, battery electric vehicles, essentially a battery on wheels. Then there's hybrids, which have both ICE and EV technology inside them. This makes them biracial, just like Obama. So thanks, Obama. There are many types of hybrids, but here, just note two types. Regular hybrids, which don't have an electric plug to charge, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which do have a plug you can optionally use and have an electric range between that of a regular hybrid and a full electric vehicle. And the thing that really differentiates the two is all electric range, which is how far you can go using only electricity before the gas has to kick in. Range anxiety, which is the fear of running out of electricity. And finally, charging infrastructure. There's local charging and long distance charging. Both are important. So here's the situation. Tesla has been and still is the only company in the world that has made a long distance EV above 200 miles range. But even with that range and their long distance superchargers, there are many reasons why pure EVs alone are not and for some time will not be sufficient for the needs of many usage scenarios. But when faced with that reality, some people choose to be reactionaries. Pure EV fanboys are usually Tesla fanatics. They are intolerant drunk in Elon's man juices and hate brands that don't copy Tesla's strategies towards electrification. They showcase the worst aspects of fanboyism. For example, hate against anyone who is a fan of cars that have amazing exhaust notes. Against any hybrids or fevs, some even blame Prius for delaying the advent of EVs which is fucking ridiculous. And against any EV manufacturer who is not Tesla. Current target of hatred, the Chevy Bolt. So now, I will calmly show you the five main ways that FEVs not only make sense, but are necessary. Reason number one, rational range anxiety. Many prospective buyers are rationally fearful of the shitty charging infrastructure and the range even with Tesla range and Tesla superchargers. Examples include any light duty truck or work van, your F-150 hauling shit or your Mercedes Sprinter, medium or heavy duty vehicles, cement trucks, semis, towing vehicles like F-350s and so on, taxis which are often used 24-7, emergency vehicles, police, ambulance, fire trucks, rescue, SWAT and military assist or transport, working in very unreliable, undependable infrastructure areas, and racing applications. And by the way, 
That doesn't even include non-car vehicles that have greater energy and power needs, such as ships, planes, submarines, and shit like that. All the above examples involve one or more of the following. Hours and hours of idling, huge unexpected peaks of throttle, sudden unpredictable use schedules, 24-7 demand with very minimal time for refueling, and huge stress put on the drivetrain by towing. Here's an example. The Model X was tested by Edmunds and its range is about 240 miles. And when they towed a trailer, the range dropped to about half. And keep in mind, the trailer they used was number one, aerodynamic, two, small, and three, relatively light. And that is what towing does to your fuel consumption. Reason number two, irrational and psychological reasons. Many prospective EV buyers are irrationally fearful in the following ways. Thinking they need more range than they actually do. Most Americans travel less than 80 miles per day for almost the entire year. Battery longevity, except the Nissan Leaf. Avoid the Leaf. Forgetting that lithium ion battery's energy density improves about seven per year. And with all these issues, that's where FEVs also help. FEVs do not induce complacency with its small electric range. Instead, they induce addiction. Their owners get so addicted to that small all-electric range, they want more and more. You don't believe me? Go ask the Volt owners. They're all hooked in all-electric range. They even change their fucking driving habits to squeeze more electric range. Now that's addiction. Reason numero tres. Your location. Like third world countries. Or you live in a rural place. Or you live in a super urban place. No garage. No charging at home or work. And rush seasons. Just, Just like me. me. Reason number four. Total cost of operation. Purchase price is too high, for now. Reliability. A Tesla charges BMW money for BMW reliability. And the Corolla is more mechanically complex, yet more reliable. Maintenance. 600 bucks for so-called optional annual maintenance. Fuck that bullshit. Service center issues, like location and scheduling difficulties for when you need to make warranty fixes. Remember, Time is money. Reason number five, supply logistics. There won't be enough bolts and Model 3s to go around. Can Holy, Holy Jesus, Jesus Musk, Musk deliver his promise of 500,000 cars by the end of 2018? Remember, the Roadster, Model S, and Model X were delayed by two to three years. Oh yeah, and good luck with the reliability problems. People still don't get, there is a huge difference between beta testing with phones and software versus with cars and manufacturing. In summary, if there's anything you should remember from this video, it's this. FEVs are allies to EVs if you care about mass electrification of transport. So the final question, the most important question that you must answer is this. Would you rather have the maximization of pure EV sales or the maximization of the electrification of mass transport? Pick one, because you can only pick one. Choose carefully.